Hello YouTubers. Down here in the gun room, got my little Marlin 1894 CL classic, I guess, 3220. Unfortunately, I got it after they put this stupid safety on it. But it's a sweet little gun. My problem is my eyes aren't so sweet anymore. So I ordered one of these little Lyman sights, Tang sight. Got it off eBay the other day. They lay down flat like that and then they'll snap up in position when you want to shoot them. Shoot it. For this gun, the serial number is here on the tang. And you don't want to drill a hole through the serial number because then you start talking jail time, I guess. Because uh, you're messing with the serial number. So it comes with this little adapter and a screw, long screw. The adapt the sight sets on top of this adapter and this screws into the sight to hold it on to that and then the front screw of the sight goes in there well there's a opening here in the middle a hole in the middle and that's where you drill another hole in the tang of the rifle and then thread it so that you're not screwing up your serial number so let me put the the rifle here in the vise. Let me get my screwdrivers ready, my drill, my tap, and my nerve, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, here we go. Now whenever I'm working on a gun, I use gunsmithing screwdrivers. If you look how that's ground on the end, it fits down in the slots of the screw where a regular one, a regular screwdriver bit will taper to, a, to the width at the end. Gunsmithing screwdrivers are hollow ground so that the whole edge of the screw head slot is getting all the torque from the screwdriver and not just the top edge of the screw and then it'll want to kind of pop out and then you screw your screws up now you can see the new screw is quite a bit longer than the original and it's said to put this together like that I don't know if I should take this out side and to the shop and do this on a drill press. It's kind of scary. A little light on the subject. Still not tight. Wow. There we go.
problem I'm seeing is I can see probably a sixteenth all the way across there the the side of the tang underneath here and on the other side I'm right flush with the edge I hope that's not going to be a problem so now I just happen to have a brand new 1032 tap let's just make sure that's what I need yep yep 1032 for the upper mounting screw so there's that and it calls for 1164 drill bit which I have right here but somehow or another I gotta find the center of that and then I want to drill square off of the tang and square back and forth this way so I gotta have it right here and here okay I got a punch and I punched a hole right there in the center Now I'm going to take my old-fashioned electric drill and get it going the right direction. Hold it square to everything. Like it's where it wants to, where it should be. This makes me nervous. There. Whew. I was afraid it was going to go zip right through the wood and then split my wood. Okay, I do a lot better at this when I've got it mounted in my mill. Break free is good for everything else. Let's put a little break free on there to help it cut. Let's see if we got through far enough. Should have. 
It's going to be nice to be able to shoot my old lever gun again. This one back out. Before I tighten that one up, I'm going to make sure this in here gets started in the right place. We can tighten this one down. the larger aperture well that went pretty slick I just hope that doesn't mar up the, the wood. Now I'm going to put you at the danger sin and we'll see how the sight lines up. What I'm going to do is check the opening on this with the notch in my rear sight that's already on there and see how they line up with the front sight. I'm afraid I might have to put a taller front sight because that sets pretty high and that's as low as it goes. Okay, This is what I was kind of afraid of. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'm moving a little closer. You see the front sight and the original rear sight right here and my peep sight back here are not in alignment. I'm going to be shooting left. And I don't know any other way other than moving my front sight Gonna have to shoot at the range because it's a little confusing for my brain. I like it. I just gotta figure out the details here. I don't think it's dark out. Let's see if we can go sneak out back and shoot a couple rounds in my, my bullet trap. Before we head out to the range, I just wanted to show you this one little thing. The nice thing about this gun is the front sight or the rear sight will fold down so it's out of the way of the tank sight. So now I'm going to take it out back. I've got five rounds in it. 
and we're going to see what I got to do. Okay, there's my target. We'll back up here where I'm at. As you can see, surprise winter hit Ohio. I'm going to go stand over here on the other side of that toolbox on my trailer. I don't know if I got both in the picture here. Yeah, I guess I do. I'm just going to kind of lean up against the trailer and rest across the top of that toolbox. And it's just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. Well, let's take you off the tripod here and we'll walk down there. Let me shut it down a minute. Okay, I put the rifle and the tripod way in the garage. Let's go see what it did. Looks like I was right, it's shooting a little left. I wouldn't call that any great group, but I wasn't really trying real hard. I was aiming at 6 o'clock right there. Um, let's see what this thing was doing. Let's see how my bullet trap, I'll show you how my bullet trap works. <laughs> what it does bullets come in here and skid in or come in on this side and skid in and go through that little gap and then I've got this tubing and it'll spin around in this tubing and there's a cap on top so they can't come out the top and it'll drop down the tube and you can't see it but on the back side here there's a piece of plate welded so it sticks in there about two inches I think so if it's still spinning when it hits the lower tube, it'll hit that and stop. You can see the lead there on the ground. See those jackets? Those copper pieces? That's probably from right there. That's probably one of the bullets I just shot. I have this hook that I can hang a bucket it'll hang on the bottom of there and I've got quite a bit of lead that I've collected that way if I'm going to shoot very much. I just didn't feel like getting it this time. It looks like it took the 3220 just fine. I imagine it's right there is where it was hitting. Okay we're in the shop. There's no way to adjust that tang sight for windage. The only way to adjust it is by driving your front sight. So it looks like I'm going to have to drive my front sight just a little bit. I'll have to do a little calculating, see if I can come up with a number. But it shouldn't take much because we're shooting, I was close to 50 yards. Just a guess. I didn't pace it off or anything. But just a little bit of adjustment will make make that come right on over. Big change of plans. Since that last segment, I dawned on me that in the instructions it said if the sight wasn't set in plumb on the gun to put a thick shim of paper underneath the side of it to get it to move over. Well, I don't think uh, paper is a very stable medium to be putting in there. It could swell up or come down or crush, and I just didn't think that was a good idea. 
So I just happen to have a whole bunch of different thicknesses of brass shim stock. That was six thousand seven thousandths, or one six thousandth, one seven thousandth, four thousandth, five, and this one is five. So I loosened the sight, tipped it over, put seven thousandths underneath it. That wasn't enough. It took it about, it moved it a little bit. So what I ended up doing was putting two thicknesses of the seven thousandths between the bottom adapter and the tang on this side, on the left side. And then I had to put another seven thousandths under, between the, the actual sight and the adapter. And the nice thing about having that front, the rear sight still on it, I lined up the peep through the rear sight and the front sight and it's all now so I'm not going to have to move the uh, front sight so far. It should be pretty good. But that was 21 thousandths of shim stock to get that over there. Now the big question is if I try to shoot long range do I have that tipped over this way so as I raise it up it's going to go farther to the right and I'm going to be shooting to the left. Uh, no, I'd be shooting to the right if the sight was going to the right. Um, I'll just have to go to the range and see. But right now everything looks cool and actually it should be sighted in for quite a bit farther than what my original sight is because it's a right there In. So it's just time to go to the gun club and get it really tested out from 50 to, I can go to 200 yards there just playing around. Was to have my original sight sighted in for 50 yards because that's what it's always been sighted in for. And then maybe sight this tang sight in for a lot longer distance. But at this point I can't see my rear sight to try to shoot. It's just my between bifocals and the other glasses and all that, I just can't see my sights. So the the tang sight's the way to go. So that's where I'm at right now on the little 3220. Thanks for watching.